hi and welcome to today's video today I'm gonna walk you through uh, the process of creating a painting I know that this is something kind of interesting at least I think and that everyone might have a different process for example my painting style is kind of quite illustrative so I like to create paintings that represent an idea or something that I have had in my mind but I know people who do paintings that are kind of a realistic representation of, of something of a landscape for example they go into forests like this and they paint from plein air uh, I also wanted to paint from plein air I mean it must be an interesting experience but I'm not really that much into like this these surroundings or the place where I live so but in the future I would like to yeah I think that if you are painting from plein air or some specific photographs then you can learn better to paint and you can kind of master everything better because you you can just really focus on the specific things on the specific like details and stuff in it but I really love to experiment and I really love to make ideas come true and that's what I'm also always doing so for now yeah in this video you will see maybe the perks or the downsides of kind of illustrating your own ideas or your own stories that you have in your mind so let's get into it so let's start the process the first step surprisingly is the experience so maybe some of you would think that the painting begins when you push the when you put the brush on the canvas but that's not the case the first thing that creates painting is actually the experience it's when you get some input in your head when something enters you it usually is something that some really memorable experience or something that really influences you for me it was being in the mountains and especially when i was a kid because when i was a kid i had kind of a different perspective on life which i don't want to go really deep into but yes that's when the that's when the, the idea was born when you basically saw when you see these mountains when you walk the path when you enter that cabin when you walk among the small birches or when you see these these grey rocks and the clouds howling or hovering above them and you might think that might be you you would forget it but no your mind somehow always keeps track of it your mind always just has it in some secret secret drawer and then something can provoke it is usually for me is a song that just provides a, provokes back a, memory but that's that's the other that's the other step uh, already so that was the first <laughs> Ta -da -da -da. 
the spontaneous mind processing that's how the second step is called so as i said that the experience of the mountains of the nature is the core of my work and the core of my inspiration but there are some other inputs and experiences that has been the inspiration for my artwork so I process something if I see a particularly for example cover on a CD which strikes an emotion in me or an item of clothing that reminds me of something or listening to a song or seeing the artwork of other artists or even random photos of nature on Instagram these experiences are somehow saved in my subconscious mind and I don't really know how it works but it works and then it happens Usually when I'm listening to a song or when I'm in the shower and just get into some vibe and the, the, the images suddenly pop up in my head and it's actually a new image. It's an image that is combined of, combined of all these inspiration and these different, different or or just something just the original experiences is somehow swirled or how how can I say it well it's not not the original thing that I saw but it's somehow twisted in a way I don't know if that makes sense so that's why I feel like my mind is a computer and I really love that thing about my mind I that's something that I'm really happy that it does for me that I don't have to do it any effort So, I would call my mind a computer if I could choose just one thing. I'm curious, what would you call your mind if you could choose just one thing? Let me know. Yeah, and I really love this part and I, I sometimes feel like, wow. It's magical, it's something happening in in me, in my head and it feels like being being influenced by something that's, that you can't see and suddenly you feel this inspiration in your life and, and this like, oh, there's something else in life, something, something just more than the, the ordinary life that we see this every day and I, yeah I really love this thing about creating art and about my brain the strange thing a very strange thing and a mystery for me is that even if my mind process, processes like um, one particular picture or memory it's always different than the actual experience and it's more magical it's kind of like kind of like if you add a filter to a photo and suddenly it just comes alive it feels like in my mind it feels so beautiful it feels like every single object talks to me and 
the house talks to me, the grass talks to me, and in some way they are just so alive, so communicating. It you feel you feel that the energy is just just pushing and oozing uh, on you. You it's just it's just alive. It's alive. Everything is alive. It's 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 magic. And I I really want to like capture this feeling because it's the most beautiful feeling ever. And sometimes I get really frustrated when I can't quite seem to achieve it because you know you just have a paint and a canvas and how do you transfer mm, the magical dust or the aliveness of the painting I don't know but yeah that that, that can really frustrate me and give me a big artistic block do you have the same block? I would be interested to know da -da -da. third step is the paper sketch so if I am in the shower I have the image in front of my mind I have to really quickly just jump out of it probably I uh, will use the towel and stuff and go and sit and take a paper, pencil and draw it. <clears throat> basically, basically, I might not know exactly like what mm, what it's gonna look like, like. I, but I just sit and I let the pencil kind of lead me, basically. I find it helpful to just, just the act of drawing, that it helps me visualize it better and I just, I just draw it on and I have a quite a fair collection of these sketches, I keep them and because I don't, can't keep up with like making all of them, but I keep them, and then someday hopefully I will make them. Fourth step: gather the reference photos. Now we are stopping dreaming. Up until this point we were dreaming, but now we are rolling up our sleeves and we are starting to work. So, uh, I get my reference pictures from many different sources. Um, sometimes I find these pictures in my family photographs that we have taken on the vacation on, in the actual place. And these are very good. These are probably like the best because if they have the best resolution and they are just really natural. But also, I I find uh, pictures on you on, not on YouTube on uh, on Google. But this can be really challenging because, as you know. You really need a disc, this really kind of a tree with this kind of a tilt and this kind of a color and this kind of a lightning and and uh, and you just can't seem to find it. But my solution, something that has really helped me with this, is to use Google Lens, which is like uh, I don't know, it's probably a new thing. I have it on my phone. You can use it. Google Lens and it will basically scan the internet to find you very similar photos to the photos that you um, actually are searching, you know, so use Google Lens. But also I use Instagram because on Instagram people sometimes post such gems of photos 
that it's awesome and I always save them although it's not the best because on Instagram the the resolution can be a little bit like a bit low but yeah that is what I do and it takes me actually a long time to find these reference pictures and yeah it's a big part of it a big part of creating the piece and the most frustrating thing about creating a landscape by putting together many elements that you find from different pictures it's actually not so easy because everything every picture has a different lightning a different way different direction from which the light comes and uh, maybe different coloration and it can be kind of really hard to put these things together in a, in a new landscape that would look that would look natural which is something that the people who paint from real life or realistically that they don't have to deal with that do you do you have a problem with that or don't you what what do you think about that five blocking in things blocking in simple shapes of color now when i have my reference photos um, i just take an acrylic color and i block in very simple and appropriate and not approximate shapes of color I do this because sometimes I want to change things around so I never start with doing details always my advice is always just start really vaguely and then look at it and see if you can change something because it, it's a problem if you already have done so many details and then you then you just want to paint over it. It's just such a waste of work. So I always block in first. Six, diving into details. At this point, I I will look at my reference photos and I zoom them in and I really work on the details. I look at the really small steps and this part goes really slow. Slow but steady, and as long as it's going well, I like working with details. It's it can really get me into the zone or just drag me into a space of really enjoyment of it. Just I'm just creating, you know creating grass and creating trees and creating houses it's enjoyable as long as it goes well when it's going bad then it's honestly kind of hard to enjoy it but otherwise it's it's enjoyable next signing my work I just always sign my work into the right lower corner it's nice to sign your work and it's important because you are making it yours like from you from you and you are basically kind of kind of feeling proud of yourself and honoring yourself you should always sign your work because it's like you will feel good about it and you will feel proud of yourself so always sign it number eight give it a name i like giving my paintings names because it brings out the poetic quality of them it brings out the message that they are actually created with an intention or with that that they are alive that they mean something when you when something has a name 
it's it suddenly it like strengthens the concept or or the idea or whatever whatever you wanted to communicate with it even with the landscapes you communicate something and even is that even if that's just a feeling that you always communicate something and what is more is that every landscape as they are different they have different personalities so to speak so they have very very unique feelings to them we know feelings like sadness happiness joy anger but the feeling can be a very complex signature and each painting has that and each painting should have a name but sometimes I'm gonna be honest sometimes it's easier to give painting a name and sometimes it's harder sometimes I have more inspiration to it and sometimes less let's say that's the end I hope you enjoy this video I personally love videos that are simple and just personal and imperfect just we don't have to make everything so professional and perfect but we know that if we are just ourselves and if we are imperfect and personal as we are it can be kind of scary because we have these edges of us that we haven't really we haven't really even them all or filed them filed these edges and we we can feel a bit weird talking like that because it's so personal but I wanted to make a personal like a simple video like this because I love these kind of videos and I wish that there were more of them I I, I just love love where when you are just like blah blah so my question to you is what is your style do you illustrate or do you work from real life and tell me about your experiences share your ideas in the comments <laughs>